How can AI be utilized to ensure our defense force is sufficiently resourced to defend our sovereign interests, especially given current geopolitical tensions? Well, that's an obvious one for you, Gus. I mean, back to me. <laughs> um, so, uh, great question, because we're a very small military. By regional standards, uh, we're tiny. So the question is, how does a very small defence force achieve advantage? You, 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 traditionally, you can have mass or size, you can have huge technological advantage, or, but the Australian government, two governments in a row now have said, we will have decision superiority, meaning we'll know exactly where our uh, forces are in space and time, we'll know exactly where our adversary is, and that will allow us to make better decisions. AI has an incredibly important, important role in that. So even though my misgivings about Move, move 37, um, we're not going to be able to do what we need to do. Traditionally, generals have always wanted to know what's over the hill. Well, we know everything that's over the hill now. In fact, we've got generals drowning in information. So the AI is being, will, will come into our control systems to help us sort through that. Now, is there bias in that? Is it, is it, is it weighted towards a particular... All of those things we will need to discover. But that will allow us, in theory, to, to be a tougher nut to provide more deterrence. Brian, do, will we need a whole lot fewer soldiers as a result of AI having roles in our militaries? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard you say no, that. No, on occasion I do. You do? Yes, yes. It's like I thought I had yeah. world When first. I truly have nothing to say on the matter. So I'll defer to people who actually know something. Mm. So, so, Patricia, we, we've always had robots. Uh, if you wanted to sort of blow up a, an explosive device, you sent a robot forward. We will have AI, in, you know, become join those robots and that will take soldiers out of the dangerous, dirty jobs. I, I sadly... Uh, served in Afghanistan and lost two wonderful young Australian uh, men to uh, improvised explosive devices. So if I can put a robot through a crossing and have that area cleared, I'll take that option every time. But there's a huge ethical dimension. What about when we put an automatic cannon or a future laser on that autonomous system mm -hmm. and we tell them that anyone with a particular face or carrying a particular mobile phone is the enemy and, and can therefore yes. be mm -hmm. destroyed. Now, I, I reassure you all that the Australian government is moving quite slowly on this. I actually think too slowly. We don't have a single armed drone in our inventory and that's predominantly because of this issue. We're grappling, our policy makers are grappling with how on earth do you do this and give the approvals in an appropriate way? The question is how long we can have that debate before you know, we fall behind. Can we turn it just all into simulated warfare? <laughs> and then, to answer your question, I have to jump in with a real answer. Maybe, Please. You, have, maybe you have no soldiers mm. and you just pit yeah. your AI yeah. system yeah. against the other AI system and let them fight it out, this, and whoever wins, wins. This could be a really good solution to a couple of wars we're having. There it is. <laughs> sort, mm. sort it out that way. Yeah. I wouldn't mind bringing you back in, though, <laughs> David Blunt, as an ethicist, yeah, on that question of warfare, where these ethical decisions mm. are really key in the theatre of war. Yeah, look, it's a really complex discussion. But one thing I'll say, as far as I know, AI has never committed genocide. It's never committed ethnic cleansing. It's never killed civilians. Uh, these are things that it might do in the future, depending on how we program. But we know people do this, right? One of the things that AI can provide that I'm interested in, someone who's interested in the ethics of war, is the constraints that it will put on arms platforms, right? It will prevent civilian casualties. It will be restraints where human beings often wind up making terrible and atrocious decisions that kill innocent people. If we have AI coded so that it compels or complies with the laws of war, the ethics of war, then we might be able to avoid things like massacres. Mm. We might ensure that things like the Geneva Conventions are respected because they'll be built in to these platforms. If they're indeed built in, because if that's built the thing. In. And right. that's the discussion that needs to be had, right? And in terms of where these discussions can be had in Australia, you know, right now the Ethics Centre, who I'm associated with, really is pushing for the uh, Australian Institute for Applied Ethics, where we can have a centre where we can think about these issues that all of us are going to have to deal with in the future. Because if we don't take a lead in this, we're going to be taking other people's leads. Mm. We either be rule makers or rule takers. That's a choice we're looking at now.